Okay, let's talk about string. So the only thing that a program can do is manipulate data. Uh, usually, this is basically just going to be either strings or numbers. Now, numbers you use arithmetic, addition, subtraction, etc. Uh, so you know about that. The strings are new, right? So the way you declare a string is with the string keyword. Notice the capital S. Um, and you can say give it a variable name and say the string is high, right? So the actual string value in this case is hi or high, and that gets put into the variable msg or message, which is of type string. So that's how we put a string into a variable. When we run that program, nothing happens because we haven't printed anything out. Let's print out that message and then I run that and you see it prints out hi. So I can go back up here and say change that message. Hi, how are you? Capitalize. Um, <clears throat> and I run it and it can print that. So that's a string. You can have any number of strings in your program. Right? Bye. And uh, I can print that message out. Goodbye. And I can run that. And it says, Hi, how are you? Bye. Uh, now, what else can I do with string? Well, you can do a lot of things, and you're going to have to remember and learn all the various things that you can do with a string. One thing you can do is concatenate. So I have the string goodbye there. I can say bye. Uh, and uh, really, bye. So that's an interesting line, right? I'm using the plus sign. This put together this string and this string and the result goes into that variable. Um, that is called concatenation or string concatenation and we use the plus sign for that. When I run that, you see that it prints by, really by, because it, it's concatenating this string with that one. Notice there's a space here and that space shows right here. So I can do that. I can even, I could also concatenate these two. So I have a message. So say I change this to back to that, and I just print message plus goodbye. I can run that, and it prints everything. Concatenates these two, and then prints it out. I can assign string, you know, string variables are just like all other variables. I can assign one variable to another. So I'm saying V is the message. Now I can print V if I run that. It's going to print the message because both V and message MSG now point to that string. They both have the same string. So we print the same thing out. Um, let's say I did this, and then I printed, I'm going to print MSG, and so I'm setting, I'm printing out V, and then I'm setting V to this new string value, and then I'm printing out the message. Uh, that message, if you run this, you will see that that message is still, hi, how are you? So it doesn't print, you are here, um, because we haven't changed that. We only changed V. Um, so, um, what else? There's a lot of other things that you can do with a string variable. If you have a variable 
that's a string like v you type a dot and you wait a second in eclipse you will see this list pops up right and these are all the method that i can apply i can use on a string so for example the index of right so if i select that one it says and i read over here it says index of it returns the index within this string of the first occurrence of the specified character so i give it a character and it's going to return the index the first time that ca in character appears in the string so for example in this case um let me just make it a little bit easier i'm going to get rid of all that I'll go msg dot index of and i want to know the letter w so i'm going to print that out So what is this going to print out? Let's run it and see. Prints out the number six, and that is the index of the letter, the first time the letter W appears in this message string. So um, this is position zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's the W. Uh, and that's the first time if I had said O, it would have print out five as you saw not this one over here which is going to be like 10 or so it prints out five because that's the first time the letter o is there uh, so that's very useful um, there are many other very useful methods um, some of the ones <clears throat> that we use a lot are Place returns a new string from that results from replacing all occurrences of all char in this string with a new character. So let's try that one. So I want to replace all instances of zero with the num o with the number zero. And now I'm gonna print out print out that. So let me first print out the regular message and then I'm gonna print out the message with all the replacements. So here it is. So first it prints, hi, how are you? And the second time it prints, hi, how are you? But the zero, the O's have been replaced with the zeros. So it looks a little bit different. Um, so that's useful. Uh, another useful one is the two uppercase. Um, so let's print that out. So you can probably imagine what that's going to do. So what that does, it takes a message and changes all the letters to uppercase. So it prints out, you know, how are you? But now everything is in uppercase. Notice also that the zeros are gone, right? So message replace doesn't actually replace the letters inside the message, the message stays the same. Uh, what it actually does, it creates a new string, uh, like it says here in the documentation, it says returns a new string resulting from the yeah, yeah. So it's gonna create a new string and return that string. It doesn't change the original string. In fact, strings in Java are immutable. They can never ever be changed, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, but you cannot change a string. All you can do is create a new string from an old one and then put that back in the original variable. So um, the two uppercase is very useful because we, we need to do that often. Um, another nice one is the length. We're going to be using that a lot. So message.length. That's going to return. Let's run that. It's going to return the number of characters in that string so the, in this case the string has 16 characters one two three four five six seven and etc um that's one we use a lot and um yet another one is message dot sub substring um, 
Let's see, we should start at position five. Run that. Uh, whoop. That doesn't work because five is a good example. So I've typed in five. What I really needed there was a number, not a character. So I'm passing in the number five, which is a character. That's not going to work. I want the number five, not the character five. So let me try that. And uh, you see what we did is we, the substring method we highlighted tells us what it does. It returns a new string that is a substring of this string. The substring begins with the character at the specified index, begin index, and extends to the end of the string. So basically, you know, we take the original string message, we go all the way to position five in this case, and that's the O here, and uh, we take the rest of that until the end. And that is why, why I printed out O, oh, are you? 